uh, thank you. Uh, so I, I will try to address with uh, this, this presentation the, the, the why. Uh, actually, we, I think we, we had a really a super good speech uh, this morning about how AI uh, can be deployed to help the network, about the what uh, as well. And uh, I, I will try to put a, a perspective about why this is a big thing for operator, why this is not just like business as usual. And I, I will speak about obsession because operators have obsessions. And what is an obsession for operator? It is when your core business is changing. It is when you're, you're spending from, let's say, single digit to triple digit billions uh, on, on a subject. Uh, depending on the size of the operator, so I, I would say that uh, for us, obsession is typically uh, in the in the second, uh, and I think for Dutch Telecom, it's, it's a bit the same, in the in the double digit uh, size of of the billions that that, that you're spending. Uh, and obsessions are also when you think that the subject that is the matter of the obsession can really change the future of the of the company. And I believe AI is part of it. So I, I will come back a bit to the, to the history of uh, the, the, the last uh, 30 years quickly and just, just give you some, some inputs about the obsession that we had and how these obsessions are now translating with, uh, with AI. So the, the first obsession uh, of, of operators had been coverage. Mobile network coverage and fixed network coverage. And the reason is we, we now forget about uh, this, this coverage issue because we, everything is covered more or less, uh, except when you go to really remote uh, places. And I feel the, the, the gaps uh, is now covered by more and more by satellites. But, uh, but the coverage, we have to remember that this is the topic for which we have spent billions. Uh, and we have spent billions several times uh, with coverage. For the mobile network, we've, we have spent billion with 2G, 10, 10 years after with 3G and then with 4G. Uh, the initial spends were, were, were huge because the initial spends were uh, when you deploy you know, the towers, the fibers, uh, the concrete and, uh, and, and the steel is, is, is the most expensive thing. And uh, we, uh, I, we, we really spend a lot of energy as operator in order to secure that we have good coverage because, I mean, you don't want an operator that has not good coverage. Uh, this is the first thing, you know. So, so, <laughs> I, someone said one, one day, uh, coverage, uh, capacity is the queen, but coverage is the king. <laughs> you know, you, if you don't have coverage, you don't need capacity, you don't need good quality of service because you're, you are not covered. So this was the first uh, obsession, and this obsession in Europe is more or less satisfied, I would say. There, there are still, I mean, I, I'm not saying that uh, we are perfect in, in coverage. There are still a, a couple of gaps uh, to, to fill, but this is mainly behind us. So the, the second obsession started really in, uh, in, in the second decade of the uh, 20, of, of, of this uh, millennium. It has been capacity. So uh, what happened is that we deployed 3G networks uh, in the early 20s, 2004, 2005. And initially, I can tell you that we had no, we had no traffic. You know, be before we had the iPhone coming in 2007, and before we had this type of dongle coming, especially in Eastern Europe, because this, this was really the start, we, we had no traffic. And uh, once the iPhone just came, what happened is that the traffic has been multiplied by 1,000 in 10 years. And this had been really the obsession of operators. This had been the reason why we have spent tens of, of billions in order to increase the, the network capacity. And uh, do you have an idea of what is this curve? No, I, sh I should not ask because I, I asked that uh, at a previous speech. And someone said, uh, this is the, the, the stock value of orange. I said, <laughs> No, it's not, but it looks like a bit, uh, ex except the end. No, this curve is uh, the, the increase of, of traffic that we had during this time period between 2007 
and 2003. So when you say 300%, this means that the traffic has been multiplied by four over a year, and, and, and you, you, have a, you can follow that. It gives a good view about how the traffic has increased in the last 10 years. And what you can see is that we had a, the data tsunami was, was something real. Uh, and it came first with the iPhone and with the smartphone. We, we had a, a bump here. Um, let me check where it is. Yeah. We had a bump, bump here with, with 4G. 4G really uh, in, increased the traffic, so the traffic has doubled uh, over one year when, when 4G uh, came. And then we have another bump here. It is when the marketing decided that, okay, we, we should launch all modern limited plans, and it has a, it has a big effect. But the, the message here is that the, the traffic is still increasing in Europe by a factor that is uh, around 20, 30%. It depends on the country, but 20, 30%. It's not anymore a data tsunami, and I think the, the obsession of the data traffic, of the network capacity, is a bit behind us. And uh, we, you know, we have room for two obsessions at a time. Coverage, capacity was, was some of them. And so we have now room for uh, other obsession. Uh, sorry. And uh, the, the, the next obsession that started five years ago uh, has been network virtualization, also for good reasons. Uh, a lot of the network equipment, the legacy network equipment, are really similar to this Donkey Kong uh, thing that you have on the left that uh, probably the younger people in the room don't know, but uh, basically it's a device that comes with hardware and software connected, and you have one game. So you, you buy a box, and the box is a single service, and if you want to change the service, then you throw away the box uh, and, uh, and, and, you, and you buy a new one. So some equipment still in the network are exactly working like this. But the big transformation that we have started five years ago with 5G core, with uh, network virtualization, in starting with the IMS, the, the, the core, and also a lot of the fixed network, is similar to an Android phone. It's, it's something that is IT-based, that, uh, that, that can uh, load software, and that is much more flexible than, um, than what we, that what, when we had before. And uh, it's an obsession that is still ongoing and that is, will support AI. Basically, uh, if you don't make such transformation, if you don't think about your network being an IT uh, thing, something that is really software and data driven, you just cannot make AI. And uh, so I'm, I'm coming to, to AI and to the, this, this why after this uh, long introduction. So as, as a range, this is our ambition. We say that AI generates and accelerates value creation for Orange with every job, every network, every customer experience, super power by responsible AI. So this is, this is the motto. And the idea is that AI will come everywhere in the, uh, in the company. But network is really a specific part because network is really uh, driving our, our core business. And network and IT are now uh, kind of uh, combining together. So what you can see on this slide is more the history in terms of IT perspective. And uh, the history of the IT uh, moves in, in kind of platform shifts. So uh, you, have, you have mainframe, PC, the web open source has been a big change, enabling a lot of uh, transformation uh, everywhere in the, in the industry. Uh, smartphone and cloud coming together uh, were also something really big, and AI and generative AI are the next shift. And we will, uh, for sure, we will spend billions uh, on, in, in AI. I mean, AI is not fully new, even for operators. We have started this journey probably in the network part, not before, four or five years ago. It's not old, but it's not fully new, but the difference is that the pace of it is, is now increasing so fast because it's an obsession, because it's something that is transforming our, our core business. And <clears throat> if, you, if you're looking at, at, at this chart, so this chart is not the value of the stock of NVIDIA, okay? <laughs> it's more impressive. It's the value, it's the revenue, uh, the evolution of the revenues of uh, NVIDIA. 
these guys uh, have started to uh, to sell uh, boards for gaming, uh, and and then they had they had the chance uh, to have the uh, crypto money uh, mining. You know, it, it was not really expected for them, and now they have the huge chance to to, to have AI. You know, they, they, and and what they did is that the, the revenue of Nvidia were multiplied by three in just one year. And, and this is the card, that the board that, that they, they have sold. It's an evidence that AI is not something just hype. It's, it's something that, 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 is, that is big for everyone and that is uh, big for, for operators as well. So what do we do with, with AI? Uh, actually, we are managing uh, something that we cannot manage without AI. And um, what you, you see on, on this slide is an example of the, of the size of a network. We, we don't realize but uh, in a network, you have, I'm not counting devices, individual devices. I'm not counting boxes that, that are uh, on households. I'm just counting like big equipment. For an operator like Orange, we have 26 countries. Uh, we have uh, more than 1 million of network equipment, uh, like, like base station, like router, like CSG, like many of them. And actually, the interesting part is not to say that we have uh, more than 1 million. The interesting part is if you want to manage them co correctly, individually, you need to take into account uh, individually their, their profiles. And, and the traffic that is coming on a base station that may be on this building and uh, on a base station that may be 10 kilometers away in, in a remote area is clearly different. And um, the, the, the parameter setting is, is different. The optimal setting is different. And so this kind of individual profile Give you, gives you the uh, obligation, to some extent, uh, to make individual uh, optimal parameter settings. And only AI uh, can, can, can give that. Currently, we are starting to use AI for that. But where we are not using AI, what we are doing is suboptimal uh, parameter setting because we, we have defined some families of equipment, some, some uh, uh, let's say, um, uh, some, some patterns uh, that, that, that we are using to make the parameter settings, but it's not really individually uh, optimized. And with AI, we, we can do that. We are also generating uh, more than one petabyte of, of data every day. We are throwing that away. Uh, I mean, 99% of it go to the trash because simply uh, we don't have yet the, the, the capability to manage all of them. We have millions of alarms. Uh, hopefully, all these alarms, most of these alarms are, are not uh, real incident. You know, uh, you, can, you can have hundreds of alarms uh, generated by a single incident. Just to give you an example, if, uh, if, if you have uh, the, a fiber uh, that, that is cut, then you will have uh, some alarms at the optical layer, you will have some alarms at the IP layer, at the MPLS, uh, MPLS layer, on the radio access network, on the industry, you know, every, every place where uh, you have traffic that uh, was supposed to come uh, from this optical network, will generate alarms, and uh, it's just impossible, as Iman said uh, previously, to, to manage that uh, manually. Uh, so, of course, we have uh, created some uh, workaround uh, for this, but it's kind of basic, and AI really is the tool to make this uh, alarm correlation, root cause analysis, all the, the, the topics that were uh, extremely well described by the, the other speech. Um, another big numbers, the call detail records. So the call detail records are uh, basically wh when, you, when you make a call or when you uh, uh, browse the internet, you, you have a lot of call detail records. It was initially done for billing, uh, but it's now used for, for many other things. We have uh, more than 1,000 billions of them every day. Uh, so again, it's not something that, that, that you can manage uh, manually. And we have even more uh, data that we are not uh, using, except when there are big incidents, like to make the, uh, the inspection or to make the investigation what happened, uh, like, like syslog uh, or, or call trace. Uh, we, we, we have really a golden mine of things that we are not uh, a, a, a using today. And when I say it's, it's no, an obsession, you know, another characteristic of an obsession of operator is that it. It, it's a journey. It's like uh, for the coverage, it was 20 years long. For the capacity, it was probably 15 years long to satisfy the obsession. And for AI, for AI, to be honest, it will be probably more than one decade, like 15 years, before we, we think, okay, we, we have 
made the most of this technology for, for network. So just one final slide uh, to give you uh, just the families of how we are using AI today. We have basically four families. The, the first, in terms of, uh, of time, was uh, what we call smart capex, optimization of investment. So the question is simple. Uh, so you have, uh, let's say, 10 millions to spend. How you spend it the best way in, in terms of value that you generate? And for that, you need to combine a lot of, of data, like urbanism data, where customers are, how many they have. Uh, you need to, to know the, the traffic growth. You need to predict what will happen in four years, five years, if there will be a shopping mall, if there will be a, a new uh, campus uh, coming. And, and with that, you can decide that uh, putting a new base station here will generate uh, one million, there 10 million, and, and so on. And this is the, the most mature part of uh, where we are using AI. We are using AI mainly to predict uh, the, the, the traffic evolution and the, the value evolution in a given area. This part is more or less mature. The, the second family is about predictive network maintenance. So this is a bit less uh, mature. It's uh, something that has started three years ago, I would say. Uh, and uh, here, the, the idea is uh, to improve the quality of service. So when you have an incident, the first thing that you want to do is that this incident uh, creates the less possible impact on your customer. So this means that uh, your customer, you, 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 you want as uh, little number of customers to be impacted and you want as little time of, in, of, of the impact. So this means that you need first to know that you are in incident. I will give you an example. Uh, we have put in place an AI uh, process for the voice over LTE uh, incident detection. Uh, on average, uh, the, when there was a problem on, on, uh, on voice services, before that, it took average five, five hours to detect the, the problem. And the reason is that uh, usually the detection mechanism was kind of basic. You know, it was like uh, 10 or 20 or 100 people uh, calling the customer care saying, oh, hey, you have a problem. And, and then you realize that the, the customer care needs to communicate with the, um, uh, with the network services. In the network services, you have to investigate if it's a problem of radio access network, of transport network, of uh, application platform, and so on. So average five hours. So what we put in place is uh, simply uh, some KPI pattern detection like call drop rate, like call setup success rate, this kind of thing, basic KPI. Uh, you look at the pattern, and when the pattern starts to be weird, uh, then you, you, you generate an alarm. And we put in place a second thing, uh, root cause analysis mechanism, in order to uh, root you know, the problem on the right uh, area. Uh, you, if, you, if you're sure that, for instance, it's a transport network problem, then you route it directly to the transport network team, if so run problem, etc. So uh, this is the kind of thing that, that will help to increase a lot the quality of service. It will also limit the number of interventions. So the, the, the cost for, for an operator like Orange, the cost of intervention, I mean, when I say intervention, I mean people uh, in cars uh, going to uh, the sites or, uh, or, or, uh, lay, lay, uh, or residential area and so on. The, the overall cost is, is around two billions. Uh, and and when, you, when we reduce that uh, by a factor of 5% or 10%, you, you, you can see that uh, it's another big driver to, uh, to put more AI. Network optimization is another one. So here we are not talking anymore about problems, uh, but we are talking about uh, how to make an investment the most efficient as possible. So you have a network, you have a lot of parameters in the network. How do you do to make uh, these thousands of parameters? Because it's, it's really thousands of parameters. It's crazy, the complexity of it. Uh, to have the best parameter setting uh, everywhere, uh, in order to make the most of your, your network. And currently, we are uh, tuning uh, millions of parameters every week uh, on the mobile network, especially. It's, 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 it's um, an area that is more advanced on the, on the mobile network than on, on, on the other part of the network. And finally, the last ones uh, that is starting uh, today, uh, I have to say, and uh, the, the value of um, technology like graphs, like a digital twin, uh, are extremely high for this uh, family of network change. So the, the, the question is, when I want to introduce a new node, 
when I want to change the parameter, I need to be able to uh, understand what, what is happening. Because otherwise, if you don't understand that quickly, you don't make change and you don't optimize your network very well, and, uh, and you also take some, some risk. Uh, so for that, we, we need super uh, efficient graph technologies. Uh, we have graphs that uh, have billions of connections, so we need extremely high scalability as well. Uh, and um, you know things like network slicing, uh, on-demand network, all of that really rely on this technology to, to, to make it at, at scale. And one of the reasons that you don't see a lot of uh, dynamic slicing everywhere in the industry is that these technologies are not yet fully mature for, for operators. So this is it for, for my presentation. So if you have any question, I will be super happy to, to have it. Thank you.